Welcome to Inside PTI, weekly videos designed to get you the trial results you want, agronomy explanations you need, and hopefully insights that will set you up for a successful growing season. Today we're going to talk about high yield soybeans. You know, at the PTI farm, we're constantly trying to come up with programs um, that will help drive soybean yields. And I, I don't call it a 100 bushel plot or a 200 bushel plot. I just call it a high yield uh, plot at the PTI farm. And this year we did have the ability to drive yields over 100. Was very, very fortunate to be able to uh, have some things like irrigation and some really good fertility programs to help drive our yield. And I wanted to take a little time and talk about that here this morning. But uh, I've been more of a corn guy in the past. We've been more about growing high yielding corn than soybeans. But this past year in 2019, I had a ton of soybean research and I'm so glad that we had it because we learned a lot about soybeans. And as I said, we were able to get over the 100 bushel plateau. So I was really happy in a year where we planted really late. We really didn't get in to plant soybeans or really corn for that matter until about the 5th of June. So we were super late this year. Now. Here's how I set up my high yield soybean trials this past year. And we're simply using three things that kind of drive yield at the PTI farm. One is yes, we have irrigation. Um, we're fortunate enough to have water available to us where we can use a Netafim drip system at the farm. And so we do have irrigation on the soybeans. I do have half of the beans irrigated and the other half non-irrigated so we can see some of the differences, the advantages of irrigation, and then guys who don't have irrigation can kind of compare the treatments that we're doing for, for their particular farms. We're also looking at at plant nutrition. Okay, I don't have any foliar nutrition in this particular study. It's at plant nutrition and we're using products on the planter, tools on the planter, like FurrowJet and Conceal to offer us that at plant nutrition. We'll talk about that more here in a little bit. Here is my water source. We actually have a reservoir that we're able to pump water out of, and this is where we're getting our water to irrigate our beans. This is my first year I've ever been able to irrigate soybeans, and I love the response that we got from our soybeans being able to give them water. I'm looking forward to doing this again, but this is the type of response we were seeing in our high yield soybean plot without irrigation. The water had not even been turned on yet and we see some differences like this in the field. And every day when we bring growers in across the world to see what we're doing at the farm, they instantly were attracted to this plot. They, were, they, were, they, would, they would point at these beans and they'd say, what are you guys doing? These beans look fabulous. The two rows of beans you see in this picture on the left are, are simply a dry fertilizer program. There's nothing else that we've done to these soybeans just a dry dap and potash program in the fall like a lot of growers implement. However, the two rows on the right is our at plant nutrition. Again, the, we have not irrigated anything in this picture at all. This is just at plant nutrition using FurrowJet and Conceal to set the foundation to drive yield on these soybeans. We start digging some plants up early and we see the, the differences in root size, root mass, where we've done some at plant nutrition. This is just a, just a little bit of the benefits we're seeing from our at plant nutrition. It'll get a lot better than this. But one of the things I want to point out is on this picture is, look at the root systems of these soybeans. They almost, they look, they look like a taproot, don't they? And traditionally, a lot of people think, well, soybeans, they are that taproot, that root drives right down. We don't have a root system that is fibrous and grows at a 35 degree angle like corn does. I think that we're picking some of that up here in this particular picture, and I think that's that's noteworthy because I, I, I do think we're changing this a little bit with our at plant nutrition and the irrigation that we're doing in our high yield studies. Now look at the root system on this soybean plant. We dug this uh, uh, during one of our field days and I guess I look at that lateral root system. I mean it does have a tap root on that soybean plant but it's got that lateral root system that I, I think of attachments on the planter like Conceal that we're applying product three inches over and an inch and a half deep and we're able to feed that lateral root. That excites me about being able to put nutrition into that plant in an early stage and even going through the growing season to continue spoon feeding that plant. And so this is exciting to me with products like, like Conceal now. We really haven't had a product like this in the past and it's really been um, one of the big attributes, I think, of us growing some higher yielding soybeans because of this at plant nutrition. Now, look at this picture. And this is amazing what we found this summer. Now these are 30 inch row soybeans and you can see our drip line. We've got our Netafim 
uh, drip line in here that we're bringing in from our water reservoir. But look at the root system of these soybeans. Remember before we mentioned that soybeans have a tap root? Not in this plot, and this was really fun to watch this year. We've got our drip line right where we've, we've done our at plant nutrition with our furrow jet and our conceal. But look at this big fibrous root system that really is going to the center of a 30 inch row. I thought that was really interesting. 30 inch rows and we just pull a little bit of the soil away and we've got this big fibrous root system that knows where the water is at. It knows where the nutrients at and she's going right to it. And this root architecture, this changing, I guess, it was really interesting to me and I really want to work more on this in the future. Again, try to drive the root system to get to that fibrous root system to really drive yields um, on, on soybeans. Here's kind of a, a picture of what it looked like in the middle of the growing season. This was in August and this is Mark, one of our uh, staff members at the PTI farm. And I guess if you look at the right side of the picture, uh, be Mark's left, you see these soybeans that are smaller in size. That's just our fall fertilizer program. That's just a, a typical dry program, DAP and potash. But you look at the left side of the picture, it'd actually be Mark's right-hand side. You see this taller plant, the trifoliate leaves are much larger. We, we were building an animal here. And again, this was a result of being able, being able to, to utilize at plant nutrition with furrow jet and conceal. All these beans were irrigated. It had the same amount of water, but look what that at plant nutrition is doing for us to build this bigger package. And, and again, trying to drive yield. Look at the trifoliate size, I mentioned that earlier. It was amazing to look at the size of the trifoliate leaves where we utilize at plant nutrition. The size, I, I, I swore all summer long that these trifoliates were going to grow about as big as my head. It's just tremendous size and it was important this year as we think of a late planting season. We didn't plant these beans until June 12th. June 12th we planted these 30 inch row beans and knowing that we would have had, if I would have known we would have had these larger trifoliates, I would have adjusted my seeding rate a little bit. We planted these at 130,000. I probably would have backed them down a little bit knowing that the trifoliate size were, were much larger where we had the at plant nutrition and I think that might have helped me with, with some more lateral branching and the ability to add more nodes, more pods to drive yield on these soybeans. All right, here's where the yield came in and I, I guess I just want to start with furrow jet. We, we look at the at plant nutrition. Let's start with furrow jet and, and I, I split my, my planter, my furrow jet up into two um, application points on furrow jet. I'm running product in the center orifice of my furrow jet and then I run another product in the wing. So let's start with furrow jet centers. We're using a, a, uh, a sugar product from QLF. It's called Boost. We're running that at two gallon in the furrow jet center and that, that did a nice job of increasing some yields and that's a pretty affordable product um, as well. So that did a nice job. We, we then focused to the wings of furrow jet. We're, we're using agro liquids, pro germ for a phosphorus source and their sure K for a potassium source. Again, that's in the wings of furrow jet. We're picking up some yield there. But the big winner this year in our high yield soybean plot was conceal. Dual band conceal placement of a 141246 in some UAN, three inches away from the furrow, an inch and a half deep. It was just a monster for us yield wise. We're driving yields over 100 bushel. Guys, the only time I had 100 bushel beans at the PTI farm is where I had conceal at plant nutrition applied to those soybeans. So, Pretty big deal for us using Conceal. Conceal started out as a corn nitrogen product for us in our testing program, and we started utilizing it for soybeans, and we're th seeing things like this. It's just a monster way for us to really do a good job of supplying at plant nutrition for soybeans. And this, this 141246 is, is a product from Marco. It's called NutriStart. This is a salty product, but it's okay because Conceal gets it far enough away, but yet close enough to feed that plant fast and efficiently. So we were able to get over almost 104 bushel yields and I'm, I'm really happy with this just because we planted so late this year. I didn't think we were going to be able to drive yields that high, but we did. But it's all due to at plant nutrition and our Netafim irrigation system was huge for us. Here's where the at plant nutrition, we kind of separate out the treatments. And this is why I say conceal was such a big deal for us. Because look at the, the two concealed treatments. I mean, we've got concealed by itself and then kind of the kitchen sink program. 
but 12 to 15 bushel coming from where we had conceal. We separate out the furrow jet. We're seeing two and a half to four and a half bushel yield response, but conceal was, was definitely a, a big uh, attribute for us. Look at the irrigation. Again, we're using a Netafim irrigation system, and we're seeing 25, 27 bushel across the board of being able to irrigate beans. It was my first year irrigating beans, and I want to do it again based on this response. Tremendous response by being able to add water to soybeans. So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is I'm excited about the ability or the opportunity to, to drive soybean yields higher. For me, yes, irrigation was a valuable tool to, to get 100 bushel plus soybean yields. But even without irrigation, tools like FurrowJet and Conceal, they're giving me the ability to apply nutrients at planting time in a, in a high concentrated band to help set the foundation for higher yields. So for more information or questions that you may have, feel free to reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer, or you can email us at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI, and in the meantime, thanks for watching.